Hello everyone, this is Deborah at Craft Project Whiplash. I thought I would share how I store my stamps today. I have uh, my cling stamps in here, my clear stamps. I don't have any wood mounted stamps pretty much anymore. I have a few alphabet ones that I just keep. Uh, but for the most part, I don't really have any wood mounted stamps anymore. So they're all cling or they're uh, clear and they're all in this rack here. This is called a scrap rack. If you're not familiar with a scrap rack, it's basically a big flat rack that sits at an angle and you have all these uh, binders underneath here and then you load up all your page protectors and all the, the things that you want to put on here and then you just, I think, I believe there's seven on this one and it has uh, wings on the side to hold it um, up. And then you can just flip through it. Uh, kind of reminds me of a catalog you'd see in an auto parts store where they have all the catalogs lined up. Um, I have mine propped up on some wood here because I like it to be a little bit more. Um, it was the angle was a little sharper. I like it to be a little less sharp, and I have to stain this still, and I haven't done it yet, so that's to come. Um, but anyway, you can see some more videos about scrap racks um, if you just Google or go on YouTube. There's all kind of videos about um, the scrap rack. Um, Tiffany is the lady that invented it. I, I believe her and her sister. And they have all kinds of information about it. And it's, it's really great. You can hold anything in there at all. It just holds all different uh, sh configurations of page protectors. And then you can put whatever stamps that you have in here like um, a lot of mine are um retired stampin or current stampin up um i have a lot of clear i have tim holtz and graphic 45 so i have all kind of stamps in here there's there's um it doesn't matter what size what shape it doesn't matter you can put them all in here just according to whatever uh configuration of page protector that you use okay so let me get a little bit closer and I'll show you a little bit more detail about how I organize them and also cata um, catalog okay, them. Okay, this is a close-up look of the first uh, binder in my scrap rack. Um, you can kind of get an idea of how it's made. It's basically just a binder uh, with Velcro on the back. Very sturdy, very solid Velcro. It's not going anywhere. And then the, this is the soft part of the velcro and on, on the actual rack itself it has the the loop uh, part and that's how it stays on there it's really really sturdy in fact you don't want to just pry it off you need to have a little uh, bone folder um, I always keep a bone folder over by the rack and I can just stick it right up underneath there and pry it off the velcro because it's very heavy duty strong velcro okay so this one is for my stamps um, and I'll kind of show you how I have them uh, in the pockets and how I have them categorized. So let's go in a little bit. Um, okay, these are the six by six pockets. So there's four of them. Um, and what I have done is I've taken all of my stamp sets and I have put whatever would fit in here. I tried to keep all of the stamp sets together. So like um, this particular one is, it's really only one stamp set, but it was two boxes if you're familiar with this Stampin' Up! set. Um, so it was two DVD cases. So two DVD cases fits in this small six by six uh, little pocket. So I saved so much space once I took them out of the DVD cases. I still kept the cases, I kept the labels, just in case for some reason one day I wanna maybe sell them or I don't know, I don't usually sell my stuff. But anyway, um, here, for instance, is a completely different stamp set. And the great thing about this is it does not have to um, be in the same category. It doesn't matter. Basically, I just picked stamp sets that would fit. So I just put, um, these are the uh, Halloween stamp set, and then this is another one, overall, overall set of four. And these are stamping up as well. So I put the label up here of uh, the name of the set. That's, that's it. Um, so it says oval all, set of four, so I know, and I stamp them all on here. Um, or if you have them stamped somewhere else, uh, like a lot of times I copied the, I took the label out of the DVD case and copied it, and then just cut it out and put it, because um, uh, I, I have another whole copy in my 
catalog which I'll show you in a second that's how I find all of my stamp sets because I can find anything in my craft room as far as um, stamp sets any kind of tool punch anything in less than 30 seconds and that's the beauty of categor um, cataloging it like this I always uh, say it's kind of like the library when you go in and you f you go to the card catalog and you find whatever it is that you're looking for and then you go to wherever that location is and there it is that's how my craft room is set up now and that is based on the totally Tiffany she's the one that owns the scrap rack she developed the system um, and if you follow her videos she goes in, in way more detail than I could possibly go into but it's it's worth it it's really great it's a lot of work but once you do it it's really awesome okay so this particular um, I start here so what I do is I label each pocket and now I pick a um, um, like s I pick that for stamps doesn't matter what kind they are I put them all together so I just picked s for stamps it's simple makes sense to me um, punches is P so I do P whatever one through six or whatever it is um, dies you know I just I just label them real simple okay so this is s1 s2 s3 s4 and so on so every new I only do one sided of the uh, cling mount because they're a little thicker um, but if they're clear uh, it's really plenty of room in here. You could do double-sided on this if you wanted to. And if I was to do that, I would label the other side um, the same. It would be the same pocket. So no matter what, this would be S1, whether it was front or back. This is S1. This is S2. Okay. So in my catalog, when I'm when I say this is Halloween, I have a fall section. So this stamp set is going to be in fall, and I'm going to put that. That's um, S2 so I know exactly where to go get it on my uh, okay my so rack. as I go I just there they just keep on going five six seven eight um, if it was possible to put more than two stamp sets in um, a pouch I would and I just fit them on there I'll show you one how it looks on the inside um, also this uh, these are those the tote scrap rack ones and they have the little flaps so it holds all your stuff in really nicely um, but I still put velcro in here because I don't like the flaps going all over the place sticking out so here's the card now this card is uh, permanent it stays in here all the time and when I want a stamp set out of here I just pull it pull the actual stamps and I what they are is on some acrylic or what I do is I get laminating sheets I like the five mil because it's a little bit thicker, and I just run it through my laminator, um, empty, just a just a laminating sheet by itself with nothing in it, so it just comes out clear. So then I put all the stamps on here; they're clean, they stick great, and um, so all I believe this is one, two, three different stamp sets in this one little six by six um, little sleeve. So I save so much space. I had couldn't believe when I got through organizing my new craft room how many containers I had left over and how many how much space I had left so and then also when I'm working on this I need say I might have two or three of these out if I'm doing a project so I also label the plastic to where it goes because this this stays in here and if I have two or three on my desk, you know, stacked up here, and I go to put it away, I want to be able to put it away quickly. That's the whole point. Put it, find it quickly, put it away quickly. So I, I just label that with a sharpie, um, and I round all the corners too, so it makes it easy to go into the um, the little pocket. So that is how I do that, and um, they slide really easily right back in there easy to find and I'll show you see if I can flip through and find some clear I might not this might be just all wait and there's all different brands in here I didn't try to worry about um, category categorizing that is a very hard word for me to say um, them by uh, manufacturer I put them all in together whatever I grabbed and and went to put in here next that's what went into the next pocket and that is the beauty of this system uh, if you have say um, a, ca um, a shelf and you have all these pretty boxes lined up and you have all of these stamps uh, in there well eventually if you keep collecting you're gonna 
fill fill it. You're going to be full. So you go on a buying craze and you buy, you know, 20 more stamps. That's where, where, where you're going to put them. Now you have to go back to the drawing board, start all over, find new boxes or a new shelf to put all the boxes that you have. And I don't know about you, but every time I go back to buy new boxes, they don't sell them anymore. They're discontinued. And that is very frustrating to me because I'm OCD in the way I want things to match as best as I possibly or can have them match. Some people don't mind them not matching, but I just am not that person. So there you go. So um, let's see. Okay, here's some. Um, no, these are all clean mounts. Hold on, let me grab one that has some. Um, some clear. Okay, this is another spinder in my scrap rack. So this one's great because this is going to show you how you can store different sizes of stamp sets. Some are pretty big. Tim Holtz stamp sets are pretty large and they don't always fit into a 6x6 six six size. And some are kind of small so you don't want to waste, um, you know, a whole, like this I put several stamp sets in here. But if, say, you don't have any new ones and you just put one in here, like if you see this one, I only have you know a couple little stamps in here but I have the space left over so if I buy some individual small little stamps that I don't need a whole pocket for I can just add them onto here and that's it doesn't matter if they um, have anything to do with the typewriter or not it just matters that they fit in this pocket and fit on this paper that's all that matters um, I'll show you this one it's the same it's on a piece of plastic um, and these are clear if you can see them so they're just the clear mount and then I wrote on the this one happens to be S151 so I know where to put it back so stick this back in here real quick and these so far most of my stamps will fit in this uh, space but if I flip on that down you can oh and another thing too is uh, here I just got this new set from the stamp fest and there's a little bit of room to grow here as well but I also bought the dies that go with it so this is where I also keep my dies so if it belongs with the stamp set um, I put it back here um, and okay now this is great these are big pockets these happen to be 6 by 12 so these fit those really long um, stamp sets that or stamps individuals that are just really really big this is a background stamp that I have on here with this really big um, girl stamp um, but this is a background stamp this is the what is this one sanded I think it's by stamping up so this is a great way to put really big stamps that won't fit in this other size pockets and so you know if I didn't have enough to fill this I would just you know put the one that's huge in here and leave it the other side uh, blank and then when I got another one I would just I'd have a space to put it and then as I go because I was labeling them um, at 155, 156, 157. So then that this is 158, this is 159, and I just keep on going. If I if I buy a whole bunch of you know new stamps and I want to add them to the end, whatever my last number is, I believe this is my last. This is where I'm kind of coming up to. I just bought these birds, so they wouldn't fit into a smaller one, so I put them in this big one. I have a little bit of room to grow. Also, I thought I would show you when um, when you're cutting masks for the bird stamps. Um, I just stick them right on the back of the plastic and then they're always there when you need okay, to Okay, now I thought them. I would show you how I find the stamps that I need. Um, and rather than, one option is to just flip through my stamps and just look at them if I want to. It's easy to do because it's, it's real easy to flip through. But if I have in mind, say I want to use the Tim Holtz uh, Bird Crazy. Uh, it's one of my new favorite ones that I'm playing around with right now. So say I want to find that really quickly and I don't want to flip through the whole thing. I, would, I come over here to my catalog. This is a catalog that I made. I'm going to move this out of the way. Um, I can go into more detail about how I made this, but it's basically the same kind of idea as a scrap rack. Different binders and then I put all of my uh, little notebooks on here. And what this is, is basically like your card catalog. If you were going into the library, you'd go over to um, look up whatever it is that you're looking up, and then that would tell you where to go to get it. Okay, I did mine in, uh, by theme at first. It's by theme, and then it's by calendar year, and then it's by color back here in the back. Okay, so all of my 
themes. I start, and it's all alphabetical, okay, so I start uh, with animals, alphas, backgrounds, borders, and so on. I can go into more detail about what all my categories are if you want to know. Um, but say um, I want to find the bird, the bird crazy. So I did, just a side note, I do have two major designers that I like, um, which is Graphic 45 and Tim Holtz. So they also have their own category. So if I know it's Tim Holtz or if I know it's Graphic 45, I can really just go right to the T's and find Tim Holtz and find the birds under there as well. Um, I did anything that I put in here, if it's a stamp, if it's possible to use for multiple categories, I copied it, the image, how many ever times I thought I needed, and I actually added it to every category. If it was a cupcake, well, that's birthday. That could be, um, you know, celebrate. It could be wedding. So I would copy it and put it in here that many times. And then on every single page, I would put the location where that particular stamp went. S, whatever the number happened to be. So let's say we want to find the bird crazy. So I go up here to animals because they're birds, right? So I start flipping through. I'm just going to pull this off, get a little bit easy. And you can kind of see it's just Velcro on the back and the other side of the Velcro is on the wood, um, the wood back here. Okay, we'll move that kind of out of my way. Okay, so this is the animal one. It's going a little bit. So much glare. Okay. I also have a key over here. This is my key. So, you know, very basic. S is for stamps, P is for punches, T, D is for thick dies, the thicker, um, you know, Stampin' Up! Tim Holtz dies. Um, and this just made sense to me. You could call them whatever you want to. But since the other dies that are thinner, well, I didn't want T because I already have a T for thick, so I did steel dies, so S, D. So that made sense to me. Craft paint is C, P. I have spinners to put my re-inkers on and my stickles, so I put SP for spinner, and so on. Okay, so say I want to find the bird, so I'm going to flip through. You can kind of see I have everything that has to do with animals, and they're all, there might be multiple categories. See, like this is a stocking that's for Christmas but it also has an animal on it. So I'm gonna put it in animals. I'm also gonna put it in Christmas. Um, if the whole set happens to be animals, then I'm gonna put the whole set in here. If the whole set is not, Stampin' Up's famous for putting all kind of, you know, a birthday and then a wedding and then a thank you all in the same set. Well, I don't wanna put all those in the same category unless they fit. So these, like I say, happen to have all animals in them, so I put them all in here together. Um, here's more birds. This is a set that happens to all to go together, so I would probably use them together. Um, but I also have this flower and this stem. It's going to be in nature. Okay. I split my nature and animals up. You could technically put animals and nature together, but I had a lot of foliage and flowers and things, so I wanted to have its own category, as well as animals have their own category. So, uh, like I say, some of them are complete sets. Some of them are just the stamp set by itself. This is a whole set right here. This is a Stampin' Up! set. Bird cages, to me, made sense to put with animals. So I put all my bird cages uh, together. Roosters, you know, different things. So we're flipping. And also, I don't have just stamps. This isn't just stamps. These, these are all stamps. That's a Graphic 45 set here. Cat, raining cats and dogs. And if you flip on uh, through, I have dies as well. I have some dies that are butterflies. These are the, um, I think those are like half butterflies. They come up off the page. Um, there's a bird die there. There's an embosslet, so it's like a die and embosses at the same time. So I just, and here, this is a punch, so that's P, P, and it's in box seven, so it's um, a punch. Um, so every one of the, everything that has to do with animals, doesn't matter if it's a stamp, a punch, um, a die. This is a punch, but because there were so many pieces, I used the negative. It made it easier than than taping all these or gluing all these pieces on the board on the paper. These are embossing folders. I have a paw print one, and then bird cages. So I made a little sample that I actually embossed. 
I use that black magic paper that's black on one side and color on the other and then you just sand off the raised area so you can see it. I did it in white at first but it was really hard to see so I thought this was made it really nice. You could see it very right, Okay, right so easily. we want to find the birds, the Bird Crazy by Tim Holtz. So we're going to go in my catalog and it's under animals. And here is the birds. And they each have the location underneath each bird. Because, yes, I know this is one stamp set, but maybe um, I wouldn't know another set is a whole set. So I just go ahead and put the location under each individual stamp. And that way I don't have to worry um, if, if I get confused on which set it in location to. S160. Okay, so let's move this to the side. We'll pull my spinder out that happens to have 160 in it, so we'll back up a little. And uh, this one happens to start at 150, so we're just going to keep going until we get to 160. And there it is. My bird crazy. Crazy birds or bird crazy. Bird crazy. I also That's have a called. Tim Holtz um, section. Pull this back out. Since those just happen to be Tim Holtz stamps. So I can go into anything that has to do with Tim Holtz is going to be in this category. So all my Tim Holtz stamps. All them. And then there at the very end is the birds. Okay. Let's stick that back in there. And it's really easy to pop in and pop off of that um, backer board. In this catalog, not only do I have the stamps and the embossing folders and the punches, I also have stencils as well. This is a stencil that has the birds, bird cages and birds in it. So I just made a copy on my copy machine and then I just put that piece of paper in here. I put the location, which if you'll notice, this location is um, this says ST my handwriting's terrible. ST3. Okay, that is ST is for stencils. And I will grab that rack and show you that as well. Okay, this is my stencils. And it's in the same rack, stored the same exact way. Um, these particular stencils are the crafters. What are they called? I hear they are six by six stencils. Most of the most of the stencils I have are six six by six. So a few Tim Holtz ones I think are a different shape. And they'll be in a different shape uh, page protector. So here I go and, and this is just all stencils. So it's all la labeled ST. That's how I did it. Okay. Embossing folders starts with an E. Embossing folders. So I have this uh, binder here and it, it's, it's not that full. If you can see I have a lot of room to grow. So I can put if I go buy a whole bunch of new stencils, I can go put more page protectors in here and then just keep adding numbers on them, ST, whatever it happens to you know end at, and I can keep adding them and I don't have to worry about going and getting another box to fit them all in or another binder or you know some other space, some other place to put them. So, um, and I did the, all the same thing. I copied the stencil on the copy machine and I put the, the paper in here as well. It's labeled with um, what it is, ST, one, two, three, four, and so on. Now these I did do double-sided, okay, because they're so thin, but I still labeled them one, two, three, four. So even though this is the back side, it's still one, two, three, four, okay? Hope that makes sense. Um, and I keep, just keep going, there's more stencils. Okay, now we're getting into some different size and shape stencils. This is a Tim Holtz one. Um, this is another um, page protector that Scrap Rack sells and it's um, just, they're just some weird shapes that they put in here, but it fits the Tim Holtz stencils perfectly. So I could put six in here and then, you know, a couple of smaller things in here, um, you know, another brand or something. These happen to be just some old stencil, probably from years and years ago, and I just I didn't have a problem cutting them up a little bit because like they I, th I believe these came with on the same sheet like an eight eight and a half by eleven sheet with all these shapes so I just cut it I had no problem doing that so and there's uh, this is all double sided different stencils um, and so on just different shapes um, these happen to be the ones like like those protractor, like drafting or architect stencils.
So I have a couple of those. And, um, and I have some extra room to grow. So there's an empty one. Okay, so that's all of my stencils. But very easily, I could add more in here and just keep that number going higher and higher. Okay? And um, then on the next binder I thought I would show you is my... It's those thin dies that... Uh, like Tim Holtz has these skinny, tall, but they're not the steel roll, steel roll dies. I don't know if they're called thinlets or... I'm not real sure. A lot of these are, are stamp, stamping up. All these are. These are Tim Holtz here. So I have them in here. Now this particular uh, pocket I made myself with the few. It's not. I don't have the fuse. I have the um, the Project Life one. So I actually made these pockets. And here's more um, dies. I just cut out one and I pasted it to the outside of the paper. So. Um, like this particular one, it, the paper stays inside the pocket, and then I just pull the die out. So it's one of those real thin Sizzix Sizzlets, that's what they're called. Okay. I have a whole set of alphabets in here. Here's my whole set of alphabets, all on here. And this, um, I believe, yeah, this is a Becky Higgins page protector. So there's more more dies. These are all one layer because they're kind of thick. Now, if you'll notice on these, these are called ND. Well, I tried to find something that made sense to me, so I called them narrow dies, thinking about thickness. Because I didn't want thick dies, I didn't want thin dies, I didn't want, you know, the other were steel rolled dies. And they, these aren't all sizzlets, so obviously I didn't want to call them S because I have the S for stamps, so. Um, anyway, I picked ND. You could call it whatever you want. So that's how I know. So I labeled it all ND, 1 through whatever it goes. I believe I've got all the way up to 40 with a couple spots empty. Okay. Now we're going to get into my embossing folders. Now these happen to fit all on one um, spinder. All these dies and embossing folders. You might have way more than I do, so you'd need the whole thing maybe for embossing folders. This is how I did it. I use the, um, I think they call these the Fabulous Five page protectors. These are from Scrap Rack. It's really four big ones and one teeny tiny little pocket right there, which I haven't found anything that would fit in there. So, But I still numbered it because you never know. I might find something really tiny I want to put in there, and it needs a location. So um, I did all these starting with E for embossing folders. Okay, so I did all these one, two, three, four, five. This whole page is one through five. And then I just kept going. And the great thing about this size, it will hold those big now, five I can by see them. I didn't need to do paper because um, I can look at them and I can see what it is. And basically, I'm just um, storing them here. So if I pull my thing out here, there's my backgrounds. So I open this up and I keep going until. I find some embossing folders and here's all my embossing folders and I did them all with that black magic paper it's coordinations is the brand so you can see and then I labeled them all their location so this is that was my dog sorry <laughs> um, well, focus I think the combination of orange ink and lighting but anyway it's this says e44 and this is the well, let's say this one. It's the Paisley one. I don't know what they call this one. This one's E27. See, it doesn't matter. that They don't have to line up at all. Um, E27. So if I go in here, I can flip through. This is, uh, it goes up to 15, 20, 25. Okay, here's E27. And um, I put a little tape on there so they won't, it doesn't flap up. Um, and there's that uh, Paisley embossing folder, E27. So this is labeled, this is labeled, and then it's labeled in my catalog. Okay, so this turned out to be not just stamps, turned out to be embossing folders and <laughs> dies as well. But basically it's all done the same way. If I want to, if I want to go out and I want to buy two dozen more embossing folders, I can. All I have to do 
is add more to this binder or I can get another binder and, and just keep going. So that's the beauty of this system. Um, that's not that constant reorganizing, organizing, which I love organizing. It's one of my favorite things to do. I spend half my time, I think, either crafting or organizing. But um, I don't like spending wasteful money on containers and then have, uh, I have a container closet full of containers that I won't throw away because, um, well, I just don't throw away containers. You can constantly reuse them. But it's a lot of money sitting in there. So anyway, that's kind of an overview of how I store my embossing folders, stamps, and my stencils and my thin uh, sizzlets. And I'll do another video on how I store my thick dies and my steel roll dies. That is uh, not coordinating stamp sets because I showed you in here. Uh, in my stamps, uh, that's where I put I put my coordinating dies with the stamps. Okay, all right. Uh, thanks for listening. If you <laughs> stayed the whole time, great. Um, but uh, if you need more information or want to to ask any questions, feel free to. And I will talk to you later. Thank you. Bye.